Well, we're now joined by Arise analyst Frank Tieti and Professor Cyprian Edward Apo, who is a legal scholar and director general of the Institute of Law, Research and Development at the United Nations. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Uh, but first, uh, let's start off uh, coming to you, Frank. Well, it's quite a busy one, an interesting moment uh, for uh, the courts uh, in Nigeria. Uh, first, clearly, paint us a picture of what these. Uh, first, let's start with uh, today's uh, ruling uh, f that the PDP and uh, and the APC are still talking about. Well, uh, whereas the full test of the judgment hasn't been made public, the presumption is that uh, the reports that we have received concerning today's judgment has been quite clear. And uh, many uh, lawyers saw it coming because the decision has been consistent with that of the F Court of First Instance, the Court of Appeal, and now ultimately the Supreme Court. Uh, it's a very interesting judgment because uh, the court has made it clear that um, uh, it will not change a time-tested legal principle of uh, local standi on the basis of any form of uh, exigency or urgency created by uh, the, the, the politics of the day and the overwhelming pressure of the social media. Uh, the court was mild in, in, in the award of costs, but uh, did not fail to deprecate and chastise uh, lawyers, especially senior lawyers, that don't appreciate that you don't have to waste the precious time of any court for that matter. Uh, it, what this judgment has shown is that there is a Supreme Court that is uh, observing what is going on around it. The, it's no longer the perception that uh, you have some uh, jurists up there that are immune from the happenings of the society. That's why they are able to make reference to the social media. Uh, it would have been very interesting if the court had considered it the subject matter of double domination and made a pronouncement on it without necessarily giving any form of effect or order to, that would be beneficial to any of the parties while still dismissing the suit so that it becomes clear that um, a, the, the, this judgment is based on legal principle and not necessarily on the propriety of uh, double nomination. What the court has done is to say that uh, it's not moved, uh, that uh, it will not in any way be allow itself to be drawn into the politics of uh, uh, the, the inauguration that is about to happen in a few days' time. Uh, Prof, I mean, in ruling on this matter, the uh, court made some you know, very uh, salient points. It actually said, look, counsel should do better to advise uh, their clients uh, to desist from frivolous matters. And also went ahead to fine the plaintiffs, uh, hopefully as a deterrent, you know, to uh, any attempt to waste the court's uh, time. What do you make of the legal environment, you know, in the country? Your thoughts about the current judicial environment in Nigeria, considering, of course, all the rulings coming from the uh, tribunal? Yeah, uh, well, my opinion, um, I know the Supreme Court uh, has spoken, and the Supreme Court is a court of law and a court of policy. He makes law and he develops the law and uh, redefines the law. He has the power to do that. The Supreme Court of any country across the world. Um, but I, I, I don't uh, buy into opinion of uh, courts having the habit of uh, slamming lawyers and uh, litigants with the excessive costs. And I think it uh, impeaches the, the, the principles of uh, uh, justice, the pursuit of justice, and uh, impeaches the, the provisions of uh, Section 66A six, six, uh, six, six, uh, and uh, uh, B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The duty of the court is to entertain uh, grievances and address it and then define the position of the law and, uh, and uh, give a direction of what should be followed as a precedent. And uh, that is how countries are governed. And that is the, uh, that is the, uh, that is the, the spirit of law. So when, you have the, when the justices have the habit of uh, attacking people at, uh, who approaches the court, 
I think that in any way, technically, uh, the justices are the, the judiciary, technically, uh, uh, encroaching on the inner morality of the law. That shouldn't be. Uh, people go to court. People go to court in order to be clear of certain dispute, or uh, to for the court to address controversies of law and controversies of facts. So the judiciary should, uh, our judiciary should redefine its cause. That's my position. Well, I, I think I'll stay with, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, Professor Epo before I come back to Frank Tate. Frank uh, had raised uh, some of the key issues uh, mm. uh, which the judgment stated specifically, uh, speaking about social media and a few other things. Uh, so, uh, Professor Epo, speak to us on uh, the area or the aspect where uh, the court uh, chastised uh, the uh, senior counsel by saying that they misled the court and the people, uh, knowing full well that they said they checked uh, let me give you the quote. I checked mm -hmm. and searched in, in its entirety of the record and indeed the judgment of the court below, and there is no such finding to think that Leonard Senior Counsel will mislead the court. That's in the case of double nomination. Uh, yes, as I, as I said, uh, the duty of the court, the functions of the court, mm -hmm. constitutional function of the court, is to entertain grievances from all parties citizens across the world, across the world. Now, the, why do I go to court? And why would I want to go to court? Because I have a grievance against another person or government or any institution. The purpose of the court is to define what is the position of the law. And that definition of the position of the law gives birth to justice. I don't see uh, people going to court as being frivolous. I, I think that court should be redefined. Because it's an, 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 an another a technical way of uh, discouraging litigation. Litigation is not uh, an offense. Litigation is not an abnormality. Litigation is a right of all citizens. Right. Uh, uh, Frank Tete. And otherwise. Yeah. Well, let me bring in Frank Tete then. Very, very quickly. I mean, Frank, uh, your response to what Professor has said here that, look, litigation is not a crime. And when... Uh, you know, a party goes to court to seek justice. The court is in the place of the court to actually listen and, you know, uh, give justice to uh, the plaintiff. But it, in this case, uh, I think what Prof is saying is that maybe the courts are, you know, involving themselves in what they really shouldn't be found uh, doing. Maybe the political aspect of uh, these cases. Not at all. I don't think so. In Nigeria, by our constitution, particularly section 36, uh, two in only two uh, in persons have the right to address a court in Nigeria, the Nigerian citizen and a legal practitioner. Well, when the Nigerian citizen by himself goes to approach the court and he does whatever, makes, what, makes whatever claim and he does whatever he wants to do, it is understandable when he doesn't apply the rules. But when a legal practitioner, you know, exercises uh, the, his right have been briefed to represent any person, there are standards of legal practice that he must abide by. And some of them are very elementary, one of which is legal, uh, local standard. The court is not a place where you go to, to, to go and gamble. It's also not a place where you go and carry out one form of academic exercise or to go and play uh, some, you, you know, play with some uh, uh, imaginate, imaginations of what you think what the law is. No, the time, court has always maintained to every Every legal practitioner knows that the court does not play, does not entertain frivolous matters. So when a senior counsel approaches the court knowing full well that he does not have a reasonable course of action, he doesn't have a course of action, and he, he engages in wasting the resources of the of, of the state, because you must appreciate that in Nigeria has one of the most subsidized judicial process in the whole world, where, where you file cases with just five thousand less than five thousand naira, including service. So when in that situation the court expects a very high standard of uh, uh, legal practice and a, the general outcome of litigation. Therefore, the court is in a very a good position in law and by practice to actually chastise any legal practitioner that hasn't weighed enough the basic, you know, applications of the law before it approaches it. And that's the situation. I mean, the courts may not, and in this case, the Supreme Court cannot possibly understand that a legal practitioner will not know where and when his, uh, his client is a meddlesome interloper, where his client does not have any business you know in a matter because these are fundamental for example 
A legal practitioner must know that if a client is approaching a court, he must have certain facts that he's adducing that will give him one benefit or the other. You don't go to court as someone who is, uh, and again, this is the nightmare of every uh, social activist uh, of blessed memory, Ganifa Emi, for example. You go to court on a matter that does not concern you. Very good point you intend to make to cause some public change or the other. But several times, Ganifa Emi was all, often told by the court that, yes, but you've got no business with this. This has, that it does not concern you. The court does not encourage that kind of uh, uh, practice uh, because it's contrary to public policy so that people don't go and be buying cases and be, you know, looking for cases to now flood the court and be doing a form of uh, investment in cases in matters that don't concern, concern them. So these are basic. And that's the reason why the court is uh, obviously angry uh, in that regard. So, yes, every citizen of this country has a right to approach any of the courts, whether the inferior courts or the high court. But it is, there is the legal practitioner, the legal practitioner, the legal profession has a standard. And the legal practitioner is expected to keep to those standards. And when it appears that they are more political than uh, abiding by the standards of legal practice, yes, the court should be angry as it has expressed. All right, okay, Frank, uh, quickly here, I, I, I'm, I'm going to bring this back to you before we come back to, uh, to Professor Edward Ekbo, and it has to do with this social media, with social media, and uh, categorically and specifically, they mm -hmm. said using the social media to terrorize and bully the justices of the Supreme Court by the appellant is appalling and unprofessional. Speak to us on, you know, the newbie, you know, what the fad that we have seen lately, especially in Nigeria, when lawyers resort to social media and even I media. You, I can tell you that Nigerian judges are very, very disappointed in the manner that they have been bullied so far. And in, they, they, they are more disappointed in the law enforcement community that has left the people to go about making all sorts of strange claims about what judges do and what are uh, concerning the outcomes of uh, the whatever judicial processes that they have engaged in. You can, I mean, and they're just sitting there because you don't expect the judge to now begin to file uh, cases in court for defamation or all the other. You now see situations where people people and this case very influential persons will begin to make statements that oh such and such a judge was bribed even before the supreme court gave his judgment today we had statements that oh by certain persons by saying that this is going to be the outcome because the judges of the supreme court have been told so, so, such and such a thing by the president it's very very unfounded claims putting strange pressure on our judges. And it doesn't even happen only with regards to judges of high courts and the, uh, uh, upper courts, but even at lower courts. Look, the expectation is that certain persons should be used as examples when it comes to making sweeping statements. We are tolerating too much of fake news. We are seeing less and less of, of, of prosecution of persons who now see it as a way of discrediting people in authority, particularly unbiased personalities like judges. We, do, we must do everything possible to preserve the civil liberties of freedom of expression but but it is not a liberty to to now begin to impong on the personality especially of nigerian judges and the judges of the supreme court it is unacceptable so it, we expect that at the appropriate time and at every time for that matter any person that makes any unfounded sweeping baseless frivolous and vexatious statement against a judge or regards a pending matter must be investigated and prosecuted so that there can be a deterrence. This idea of terrorizing our judges must stop and let us make, so that we stop making a mockery of what comes out of the judicial process. Uh, Professor Edward Ekpo, you seem to believe that there are flaws in Nigeria's judicial system to the extent that you've actually written a book uh, to highlight them. What exactly are these flaws and do you have recommendations to fix those flaws? Yes, sir, the recommendations are adequately adduced in that book, uh, Law in Tears, as a title of the book. Law and, uh, in Tears. Law in Tears, Leconism and the Decimation of Judicial Supremacy. Um, the ETT has just mentioned one of the problems that, Niger, that the Nigerian judiciary is facing, the issue of blackmail. And um, uh, personally, I condemn in strong terms the idea of blackmailing uh, justice, uh, justice of, the, of the Supreme Court and the lower court. And um, it, it's, very, uh, it's not common in the developed and civilized mm -hmm. country. But uh, <coughs> we also have to accept the truth. Um, uh, there was, it was Mama and Fasa. I read from uh, a book in my father's library uh, when I was a kid. 
Uh, Mama Fasta said, uh, they, you make, uh, they will insult yourself, others join, you can insult you more, more than you insulted yourself. So the judiciary has a problem. Let's face the truth. There's a problem in Nigerian judiciary. I think Nigerian judiciary has already constituted itself as an odium of the country. And uh, there are a lot of issues. Uh, let's face the real truth. There are a lot of issues and a lot of judgment that you read, and then you begin to wonder. Uh, the mm. industry of, uh, of, a, of a judge, uh, how did it become a judge? So we have so many fundamental problems, right. starting from the issue of appointment. Some lawyers that do and do not have the industry of the law because of nepotism, well, because of uh, they have someone that is a member of the NJC, mm. because of political uh, influence, they are, right. they are in the bench. All right, Professor They cause a Sibran. lot of problems. It's not just about corruption. And there is also the issue of corruption. What are we hiding for? What are we trying to okay. pretend about it? There's a recent case now that is very funny. That's going on to affect uh, the PDP candidate. Unfortunately, we really have to live it there. We can't make a confounded accusation of judges. We can't make a confounded accusation against judges. Thank you very much, Frank Tete. Thank you very much, Rise News Analyst. And uh, Professor Cipran Edward Epo uh, joining us tonight on Newsnight. Thank you both of you gentlemen.